Um, is the co-host Fossa? Hello? Uh, hey guys. Hey everyone who's joined in. Um, we're going to go through uh, some of the new highlights and presentation and uh, updates that we had in um, updates that we had in the last month here. Um, but I'll wait for two minutes before we start and let people uh, come in. All right, um, super cool. Um, we have a bunch of people joining. I can see about 100 people. Thank you so much for everyone who's joined in. Um, if you haven't uh, heard me speak before, my name's Richie. I'm one of the co-founders at Price Labs. And I also have Pedro who's joined uh, me here. Pedro is uh, uh, one of our, uh, oldest colleagues, oldest not by age, oldest in terms of uh, how long he's been with Price Labs. Uh, and uh, he looks after the data science here at Price Labs. And some of the feature updates that we had here in uh, January, Fausto played a very, very, uh, for not Fausto, Pedro played a very, very important role in uh, building those out. And so wanted to have him here and have him talk about the updates. Super cool. Um, with that, I think we have settled in, uh, although we're two minutes late, I still see some people coming in. Um, I think I, I just start because we only have 30 minutes. It's tight. Um, we'll try to take questions, but if not, do, do put them in. We'll try to take questions as many as possible. And if we can't respond to you now, we'll try to respond to you one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. Um, we are also recording this uh, session and we will be putting it on our YouTube channel um, after, after we are done today. Super cool. With that, let me kick this off. The way we are going to do this today, and Pedro, can you confirm if you see my uh, presentation screen or do you see my, you see my presentation screen? Okay, good. Um, cool. Um, so the way we are going to run this today is we're just going to take, uh, I'm going to quickly walk you through four updates that we had, uh, four major updates that we had uh, in the last month. And then we're going to dive into each of those updates and uh, I'll have Pedro walk you through each of those updates and I may have questions for him as he's uh, walking through those. Pedro, that sounds good? It does, cool. yep. All right, and you have your, uh, you're logged into your Price Apps account, right, Pedro? So that you can share or do you want me I to I am share? logged in. Okay, cool. All right, um, so uh, you, you would have received these updates, by the way, already uh, via our email and via the a notification within the app, but still wanted to quickly cover those. Uh, in terms of four big things that came out, and there were there are several tweaks that keep happening within the product, but the four big things that came out is uh, one number one, we uh, launched and updated our base price tool. Base price is very central to how pricing works in Price Labs, right? Um, and uh, we found uh, that uh, we really needed to improve on how base price was happening. There's a lot coming in the future as well around it, but uh, we'll chat a little bit about what's changed in base price tool and various ways you can use it. Second thing that we're going to talk about is uh, some customizations that we have rolled out in dynamic pricing. Again, one of the uh, one of the things uh, that uh, we really want to do in Price Labs is while we automate as much of as algorithm, we also want to give you the ability to customize it and tweak it to how you want to use it. And that's where customizations come in. And so we've launched some customizations. 
group level occupancies and exporting exporting PDFs. A uh, little bit of a niche requirement, but we're going to touch on it depending on your scale or your needs. You may uh, find them useful uh, as we go about it. But uh, first up, uh, base price help. As you guys know, um, um, and I'm assuming everyone on this call has already set up a base price for their properties. If you have not set up a base price, I would highly recommend go checking out the base price help tool and using it to set up your properties. Um, and we're also going to talk a little bit about what's recommended, what's market-based and what's custom when we, when we get to uh, Pedro's uh, side of this. But high level, there's a new tool that's come in that can help you uh, determine the base price for your listing. Uh, market-based is fairly straightforward. You can say what quality of a listing do you have and what kind of listings do you want to compare, uh, what bedroom size listings do you want to compare against? We'll show you what that, uh, what that, uh, what that area's uh, average price is, but we will also allow you to, like as you see in this Jeff, we'll allow you to draw a circle around certain neighborhood to be able to say, I just want to look at my base price according to that area. Then, then comes recommended. Recommended is uh, when you import a listing, Price Labs uh, picks based on uh, whatever you already had and your performance. And Pedro will clarify a lot more of that. But what Pedro and Pedro's team has done is they've built an uh, engine around this so that uh, over time, as you continue to use Price Labs, uh, they get better at predicting how well your current base price is doing. And so they start giving you tweaks around how to adjust that. And then custom is just obvious. You can uh, put in your own base price. And then the, what Pedro's team has also done is added a nice little seasonality graph under it to show you uh, when you use a base price, what does that mean across the year, what that price looks like. Um, customizations, we've added two customizations, demand factor, which again, Pedro will get into why that matters and how, how to use it. And then far out premiums, uh, fairly straightforward here, uh, which is uh, by default, we use a far out factor and uh, we have now given you ability to uh, not necessarily uh, like to, to stop using it. And again, we'll chat about why that. Group level occupancies. If you're not familiar with groups, um, I would recommend attending Price Labs' 201 training webinar. Um, and uh, I'll drop all of these links as uh, Fausto's uh, chatting on the call. I'll, I'll drop these links uh, in the chat. Um, but uh, if you're using group level uh, group in Price Labs, you can now see occupancy percentages on group calendar, which can help you decide if you want to override certain dates in Price Labs. And then finally, um, oh, I went the other way around. And then finally, uh, Portfolio Analytics. If you if you haven't checked out Portfolio Analytics, there's a lot of cool stuff going in uh, Portfolio Analytics. But now what you can also do is you can set up certain preferences and then generate a PDF so that you can send it to your owners, or if you're working in a large company and you want to send it to your, uh, like you're a revenue manager and want to send it to your owners or want to send it to your co-owners, you can generate that and send it out. Cool. With that, um, I'm going to stop sharing. Pedro, do you want to open up your Price Labs account and walk us through the base price help tool? Yeah, I have it pulled up. So let me, let, let me know when you see it. Okay. And um, Morgan, we're just going to get into the tool. I saw your uh, comment about um, uh, if we can uh, move certain things, but yeah, we'll just see it, see it in the tool. Um, one step back, by the way, if anyone knows does not know how to access this tool, uh, although fairly straightforward, you'll uh, within your uh, price apps calendar, you'll see help me choose a base price and you click, click that and it pops up. Cool. Can you see it, Richie? Yeah, I can. All right, perfect. Yeah, like like Richard was saying, like we're pretty excited about this update. We've had uh, base price help for a little bit now, but uh, we've released some significant updates here. Right. So the, the 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 biggest reasons why we decided to do these updates were were twofold. Right. Once one one of them is that we want to give users um, more transparency about our recommendations because we think there's there's at least a need to like be more transparent so that users have a little bit more control about uh, the decision of accepting it or not and the other one is on the market based side giving users a lot more options to customize how they think about their own market so to like richie was saying the recommended base price um will come up here as a as a 
and in Richie's screenshot, it looks a little bit different, right? So depending on what kind of a base price you use, you might uh, receive a market, a base price recommendation as a number or as a percentage, right? So most users will see it as a number like Richie had on the screenshot, but some users that have seasonal base price will see it as a, as a percentage like it's shown here. So if you're using a seasonal base price, you can think about it as, as if you have different base prices for every season. So that means that uh, it doesn't make sense to recommend you a single number, right? But instead, we'll recommend a percentage. And for any user that gets a base price recommendation, what you'll see is this uh, important list of reasons, uh, which are the factors that are we're considering to come up with the base price recommendation, and then an indication about what's the impact of this factor on the final base price recommendation. So uh, it, it varies from three arrows down to three arrows up. Uh, the more arrows there are, the higher the importance. So in this case, for example, my listing is a demo listing. So it has zero occupancy across the whole calendar, which means it's a very low occupancy listing historically. So because of that, I'm getting a very uh, kind of a, a high impact to lower my base price. On the other hand, uh, my book, I think the bookings in this neighborhood are, are going down. So relative to the neighborhood, there is a, a little bit of a, a difference here. So there's a recommendation to increase base price because of that. But the overall impact is that I should decrease my base price by 7% because uh, I'm not getting enough bookings and I'm performing uh, not so well with respect to the market. Um, the other interesting uh, upgrade is on, like I was saying, it's on the market base section. So in the market base section now, you get to see a map of all the listings that we're considering. And we give preferences to listings that are similarly sized to yours. So in my example here, I'm a three bedroom. So I'm going to see only listings for two, three, and four bedroom categories. And I get to select here uh, if I want to consider them in this market based calculation or not. So let's say I actually don't care about the four bedroom category. I'm just going to care about two bedroom and three bedroom. And they are the same here in the map. The other thing that's interesting here is that you get to select um, a market-based value level. So this is kind of outlined in words, but to give you the correspondence to the math behind it, uh, you can think about it as uh, low market level is kind of a budget listing. So it will lie around the 25th percentile of your neighborhood. The medium will be the median price for your neighborhood. So kind of you can think about it as the average listing. And then the higher price listings will be in the 75th percentile. So in this case, let's say I want to do, uh, I want to, I want to say my listing should be in the in the highest price listings in this area, and then the last filter, which is kind of interesting, is a geographical filter. Right. So on top of uh, already having some level of geographical filtering here that's done automatically by price levels by distance, you can also really customize uh, your area now. So for example, in Chicago here for this listing. There's this really nice neighborhood that's called Ukrainian Village, and I want to include it. So what you'll do is you'll select the lasso too. You'll just select the area around Ukrainian Village here. I want to include the, the loop area, which is another nice neighborhood in Chicago. And this is what I want to consider as my neighborhood. So you'll notice here that as soon as I save the area, this market base price will change. And it will change uh, with respect to this change that I've made. And so all of these changes uh, get saved uh, on your account too, on your on a listing level. So you can spend a little bit of time here playing with these filters. And next time you come back to the base price help tool, there'll be the same filters again. And if you're satisfied with this price, you can uh, go ahead, like the, we can say, okay, I want the high price. So 318, if you're satisfied with this new base price, you can go and confirm base price. Otherwise, if you think that our, our settings here aren't doing it for you, or if you think you don't fall into either of these low, medium, or high category, maybe you're like a super high uh, price listing, super luxury, you can go into the custom base price, enter your own custom base price here. So let's say 400. We'll still give you uh, a plot of more or less how your prices will look um, depending on the season. And then you go and confirm base price to actually use the base price on your listing. And super yeah. Cool. Super cool. Yeah. Um, Pedro, do you have any regular property? Uh, I think this was maybe a little bit confusing. Do you have any property that does not have seasonal uh, pricing? I only have this one. Let me get another account. Okay. Or, or do you have a base price I, here? I, I do, I do, I do. Um, right. Can you that stop sharing? That. Let me I will. let me yeah. pop it open. Okay. All right, let's see. One second, let me throw it on the right uh, screen here. And then I should be able to show this yeah 
Maybe I should cover also another case uh, since uh, while you pull this up, which is the case when listings are recently imported to Price Labs. So like yeah. Richie was saying, um, our, we calculate base prices based on your performance in Price Labs, right? So for listings that are sinking prices, we look at what price, or what base price you were looking, uh, or you're you're using, and then we look at the performance with that base price, and that's how we the algorithm learns about the base price recommendation. So if you've just imported price or you're listening to price labs, you can think about it as we we don't know that much about your listing, right? We we haven't seen how it reacts to different base prices. So for those cases, instead of using the smart logic, which it's useless in this case, we rely mostly on imported prices to price labs, right? which means that sometimes you might see some weird stuff, right? If you import prices in, into price labs with bogus prices that you had on your listing, uh, then the recommendation will also look a little weird. So in that case, you know, we recommend using the market-based price instead, um, but just something to keep in mind. And we make it very clear that we're using imported prices. So instead of saying recommended mm -hmm. there in the box, we say imported. Sorry. Yeah. Go ahead, Richard. No worries. Uh, hey guys, uh, quick ask uh, for uh, folks who are listening to this call. If you can use the Q&A box instead of the chat box, uh, that would be super helpful. The chat box is a uh, little bit difficult to, uh, to uh, go through versus Q&A, we can uh, quickly see and respond, respond to things. Um, Pedro, can you confirm if you can see the uh, my screen uh, now, which has the I property? I can see it, yeah. Okay, very cool. Okay, so let's take let's take some specific questions. Um, Miriam is asking, I can't see that section, and I think by section she means uh, she can't see the recommended base price change, maybe a percent or something, right? Uh, talk to us about when does the recommended uh, section show up versus someone else. I think I'm trying to find between uh, which it is, but someone else was asking about they were seeing imported base price versus the recommended base price. Can you, uh, I know you already touched on it, but yeah. talk to us a little bit about that. Yeah, let me cover uh, four cases then. All right, <laughs> so first case, uh, users who recently imported a listing to price labs, right? So that one is brand new. And for those, we'll call that an imported base price because we don't know that much about the listing. It hasn't synced with price labs yet. So for those listings for the first seven to 10 days, we're still collecting data. And then once we gain enough confidence in the data that we've collected, you'll start seeing uh, recommended base price. But while we haven't gained that confidence, you'll see imported, which is not a smart logic. It's mostly using prices that you've imported to price labs. Second Very case cool. okay. uh, is recommended base price. So that's the most common uh, case in price lab. So those are, that's for users who have used price price in the past and have around <laughs> 10 days of um, use, use time with price labs. For those users, you'll see the recommended base price. That's the case for Richie. And then we that recommended base price is kind of smart, right? So we're, we're constantly learning about it. So as you use price labs longer, that base price recommendation gets a little bit more reliable. So that's something to keep in mind as well. The next case is seasonal base price users. So that's the case that we were shown on my account, right? So that case, it you will also not see a recommended base price. Instead, what you'll see is a percent change for recommended base price uh, that will show in the text box and not as a selectable option. And the reason for that is that for seasonal base price users, you don't have a single uh, base price that can be changed. You have to go in and manually change each of your seasonal base prices based on that factor that we suggested. The final case is for users who don't see a recommended base price at all and don't see even a percentage. And even if they've been using price labs for a while, and that's a minority of users, but that can happen because our algorithm still has some limitations depending on what kind of booking pattern you have. So if you're getting mostly long lead time bookings and not that many short time bookings, we, we still have a bias towards short bookings. So our algorithm doesn't have a lot of confidence for those kinds of users. And then for those listings, you will not receive a recommended base price. It doesn't mean that you'll never receive a recommended base price. If you start getting more uh, of the bookings that we consider um, useful for this algorithm, you'll start getting a base price recommendation again. But that's also a case that we're trying to solve by upgrading our, our algorithm logic and making it better to cover more cases. Got it. Um, what's the limitation on, there are a few people who are saying, Pedro, around, um, I am not seeing number of rooms or I'm not seeing, um, um, I'm not seeing number of rooms or I'm not seeing um, 
what's this uh, like the low medium high when does that happen it might be that you have to select uh, so right now for example richie is is clicking on the recommended base price uh, on the top of the screen and in that case you will not see any any market um, based options but if you click on the market based base price that's when you'll see all these options so that might be what's happening because all users should see this menu as long as they are in the market based selection Got it. Um, super cool. Um, Ryan, Dana, uh, Ryan Sullivan, Dana, if that answers your question, uh, do let me know. If that doesn't answer your question, um, uh, we will look like drop us a note and we'll look into it. What's happening? Um, same with Bajor, I think. Um, okay. So is this tool not as valuable for brand new properties? I'm a brand new user. What do I do, Pedro? Yeah. I, I think it is useful for a brand new user uh, in two ways, right? One is, let's say you've you've been a long time user of Airbnb and you recently imported your listing to Price Labs. The imported prices that you have in Price Labs are representative of prices that you should have for your listing, right? And so for that case, the imported price that we recommend is a good starting point for your base price in Price Labs. The other case is when you import prices to Price Labs for a brand new listing that's never sold anything ever. And so whatever you have on your PMS is just kind of a guess. In that case, it's not the, the imported price is not that useful, but you can still use the market-based base price, right? Because that market-based base price uh, has a lot of good information about how other listings in your area are priced. So for example, a common way of pricing a brand new listing is just um, selecting the number of bedroom categories that match your competition and then using the median price, right? So that would be a very straightforward way of pricing a listing. But you can do a little bit more, more thinking about what kind of a market segment your, your listing falls in and then uh, choose to like price it against the low price listings or the high price listings. So it depends a little bit, but the market-based option is always a good option for users who imported their prices. Super cool. Okay. Um, how often should we be checking the base price? So we recalculate your base price recommendation every seven days. So that's uh, checking more often than seven days should not help. Um, for users who have a good base price already that have been using price labs for a long time, it might make sense to check it with even less frequency. Like I would say like every couple of weeks, it's totally fine. Um, the base price in general shouldn't change a lot, right? Once you home into the correct base price, uh, it should stay more or less fixed there unless there's a major like change in the market. So um, that that's not the case if you're a new listing, right? Because maybe you set your base price too low and you're getting too booked. So if you're a new listing, check more often. If you're an older listing, then you've, you've already figured out your base price. Don't have to check that often. Got it. Super cool. Super cool. Um, are you, uh, is there any thought around adding more fields to this other than just bedrooms? And how are you thinking about that? This question around uh, number of people that are staying or pools or like there are, there are a few questions around that. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, those become a little bit more complicated, right? We want to balance uh, usability of the tool with how many options we show, but we do have interest in looking into what are the other things that have a big impact on price, right? That's what it really comes down to. So we we, we are we have considered and we will continue consi continue considering uh, things like amenities, right? If you have a pool or not, if you're kid friendly or not, if you have if you're by the beach or not. So we're we're looking into these things and evaluating. Uh, what's what what should go into the UI essentially but yeah I think that's a that's a totally fair point I mean it's it, it all comes down to what's the best way to filter things that do have an impact on your base best price or on your base price yeah um cool 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 all right um a bunch of questions coming in uh didn't <laughs> anticipate this many questions I am going to be going to answer these questions more one-on-one -on -one. and some of these uh look like um look like questions that uh, may need us to look at your account one-on-one -on -one, uh, anyway. Um, let me let me quickly see. Is there a way to review recommended pricing before price labs, before adding price labs to a listing? Um, we're going to address some of these one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. Um, yeah, uh, looks like Ryan's still not seeing the map. So we're going to look into your account, Ryan, one-on-one. -on -one. Um, there are some questions around, uh, maybe maybe we should take this, some questions around what's considered too booked, what's considered uh, um, when, you're, when you're recommending, and it says uh, better booking trend, lower uh, or 
too booked or so yeah. Yeah, talk to us a little bit about that yeah like the the book the historical booking listing occupancy it has to do with kind of some some absolute uh, thresholds that we have but they're they're like they, they are they are on a curve like kind of a kind of a yeah it's hard to describe <laughs> they are it's if like if you're booked uh like 90 90 percent or something like that you will be receiving like well we will recommend that you lower your base price and if you're booked consistently at 20 percent, for example we will also be uh cons like uh considering we will also be asking you to consider uh, decreasing your base price so in those extreme cases you'll you'll notice a large impact um, on historical occupancy when you're closer to like 70 between 60 and 80 percent the impact of this will not be that large so if you're in those kind of middle numbers your impact is not it's not going to be that significant it's mostly about the extreme value so we want to make sure that we're correcting base prices that are obviously wrong because uh, it's it's really hard to like tell in the middle cases uh, what's going on, right? Because there are other settings that you can use in price lab, right? Base price is, I think, the most important factor that you can use in price lab. But if your problem is related to booking window or or certain booking patterns, then base price is not the, the tool for this, right? There are other tools. So we want to make sure that we capture the most extreme cases. So that's that's for absolute uh, occupancy. The other one is relative occupancy, right? So while re absolute occupancy is good, is a good indicator, we also care about if your listing is underperforming or outperforming the market, right? So if your listing is is getting booked, um, if your listing occupancy trends is going uh, down, uh, but the market is also going down, but even worse, maybe that's a major uh, market shift, right? It has nothing to do with your listing in particular. So that still wouldn't, we wouldn't think that a downward trend on your occupancy uh, on your base price. So that's it's hard to talk about like thresholds here because uh, it, it really gets into the math and the algorithm, which is beyond the, the scope of this meeting. But just to keep in mind that those are the two really important things that we're looking at. Super cool. OK. Um, thank you, Pedro. Thank you for taking that many yeah. questions. We are going to address uh, more of this. This is helpful for us to understand, guys, by the way. Um, completely understand that some of this can be confusing, some of this can be uh, not as clear, but taking questions from you also helps us understand even uh, what to write better so that we can communicate better. Uh, um, we do a lot of math, we are a lot very engineering heavy, but uh, we can communicate better as to what essentially uh, to communicate back. Um, and Peter, point taken, uh, we're going to uh, improve on this. Um, the, the next thing that I wanted to quickly touch on is uh, two customizations. Number one that we have rolled out is around, is around, uh, Pedro, what do you see on my screen now? Can you? Yeah, I see your customization. Okay. Uh, model. Okay, cool. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so, so two customizations that we have launched. Uh, number one is, wait, where did it go? Oh, really demand. Yeah. So demand aggressiveness, fact, demand factor aggressiveness. What demand factor aggressiveness is, is uh, we also have uh, these nice little uh, help articles that we're constantly writing to, uh, to talk about this. But essentially, uh, there is a standard price lapse algorithm that's always working, which is trying to maximize. But uh, for any, any price that we are recommend, recommending, there are certain probabilities to book. And um, um, we're uh, like, we're trying to be right, not too aggressive, not too conservative. But if you think we should be uh, going, like if you don't think our recommendations are high enough, and if you want to uh, want our recommendations to be higher, you can choose a setting to call called as aggressive. This will push your prices to be higher, reduces the probability uh, potentially of booking. Uh, if you think uh, our prices fluctuate too much, you want to be a little bit on the conservative side, which. Uh, which makes sure you get a booking, uh, not necessarily the most uh, uh, optimally, not necessarily the maximum price maximizing your, uh, booking, but definitely a booking and usually uh, higher than what you would have charged otherwise. That's that's kind of what we're trying to show here in this uh, graph. There's an event that's happening, a conservative rate would put it at this kind of stuff. Uh, a recommended rate would be around the black and an aggressive rate would be around uh, this dotted red. And the way you would do it is you'd come into this, you'd click demand factor aggressiveness, turn it on. If you don't turn it on, it's always recommended. But if you turn it on and you can choose conservative or aggressive. 
And the other thing that we've rolled out is far out premiums. Far out premiums, um, far, uh, Pedro, do you want to quickly touch on why do we use uh, far out premiums? Yeah. So we, we detect events in a few different ways, right? But one of the ways that we detect events is by looking at occupancy patterns. So if a, if a night or a day, whatever, a, a night is getting booked a lot more than, than usual, right? If it's, it has a really high, like high occupancy and it's like three months out, for example, then we know, okay, this date here is going to be a really high demand date. Let's put a premium on it. But this strategy has a bit of a downfall, right? Which is if you're looking very far out on your calendar, no one's booked yet, right? And we have some ways of, of pricing for events that are far out. But one safeguard that we can put in is saying, well, really, when, when a date gets booked really far out, by default, let's apply a little bit of a premium on it. And the trade-off is, if you have a little bit of a premium far out, you're probably, um, you might be uh, overpriced a little bit in some nights. And But as the date comes closer, we'll start seeing that occupancy come in. And then we'll be able to price with more certainty uh, yeah. for that event. So, oh, go ahead. No, cool. Um, no, no, finish your thought. Um, so, but the idea behind this customization is that some users, uh, most users in price labs or most, most dynamic pricing users have uh, booking windows that are, are fine with the strategy, right? But for users that have very long booking windows, so if you're booking like six, month, six months out, you might not be well served by putting a far out premium, right? Because you still want to get booked really far out. And that's where most of your bookings uh, are going to come from. So you're not, you don't want to wait uh, for six months for price labs to, to start getting better and better and the, and the, and the algorithm and the event detection side to price your listings. So what you do is you, for those users, uh, you can disable your far out premium here and then uh, price according to your far out occupancy, which is also fine. Super cool. Um, and uh, so just to paraphrase what uh, Faust, uh, what Pedro said, I don't know why I'm calling you Fausto today. Uh, what Pedro just said is, um, see, um, uh, you, like far out, you like we're trying to maximize the price of each booking, right? So far out, we don't want to book too cheap. So we keep the prices high because we know close in these properties are anyways going to get booked. Uh, if someone really wants to book your property, a year in advance, we're adding a premium on top of it so that uh, you get that premium, right? Uh, and the way you would see it in your account today is, for example, if I was to go to this property on 2023, um, if you uh, see this black thing pop up, Pedro, do you see the black thing pop up or does it not show? I do. No, I see it. It shows? Okay. Yeah. Uh, and if you look at uh, one, two, three, four, about sixth line from bottom, there is something that says uh, far out factor default, and it shows up as 20%. So that's that's where we are adding a 20% premium to the price. And um, that, Pedro, when does this start typically? When, like how far out does it start and how does it apply? It starts 30 days out and it applies a very gradual discount. So if you go like, uh, let's go like 60 days out, for example, on your calendar, Richie. On my calendar, one second. Um, all right, my, my screen started hanging, sorry. It maxes out at 20% when it's uh, okay. very far out, yeah. Got it, sorry, too many uh, windows open. My yeah, it goes hanging. between zero and 20, uh, but starting at 30 days. Cool. So it, it's um, very gradual, yeah, go ahead, sorry. Okay, let me pop open one of these screens. Cool, um, and so uh, if, I was to go here in advanced customizations, I can essentially uh, right now choose to turn the far out premium on or off. By default, we have it on. And if you go to this uh, help article, which is right, not this one, uh, this one maybe, uh, if you go to uh, the far out premium help article, it will talk about by default, we applied 20% premium uh, beyond 30 days uh, up to, uh, and at, after 270 days is flat 20% higher. Uh, but you can choose to turn it off if you really want to take far out bookings. If you want to customize this, um, uh, attend our 201 webinar and look into occupancy-based adjustment because in occupancy-based adjustment, then you can really start customizing customizing this and doing a bunch of things here um, in, in terms of saying, I want different premiums uh, across different uh, time periods, right? Uh, that's, that, that's a little bit for a, a super advanced user. 
Um, next thing is uh, on customizations. Um, if you use uh, our uh, groups or accounts at group level, uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. And then uh, Pedro, if you can prepare a screen for portfolio analytics and we can talk about portfolio analytics at your end. Um, what we what we have done is uh, at group level, a bunch of people use overrides at group level or do things at group level. Groups, again, if you're not familiar, uh, click this link, how to use your page, you'd find these links across uh, different places or you, you'd find this question mark. And if you uh, search for something in the question mark, hopefully you'll uh, find a good answer to it using groups or et cetera, et cetera. Um, but on the group calendar now, uh, you will start seeing uh, occupancy percentages for each day. Sometimes people like to manually override if their uh, certain days are, are higher. Again, more for an advanced user who is trying to uh, do certain strategies. Uh, if you're using uh, price labs uh, uh, with our uh, recommended prices and with our uh, um, min stay kind of stuff, you don't really need to use this. Next up, uh, we want to quickly talk about portfolio analytics and what we have there. And then uh, promise we'll spend five minutes trying to answer uh, some of the questions. Uh, lots of lots of questions coming in here. Uh, right. Pedro, That's good. you want to take over yeah, and yeah. talk about portfolio I, analytics? Yeah, I have that screen ready. OK, so I guess we're just talking about the, the PDF, right? That's the only new thing. Mm -hmm. OK. So portfolio analytics, uh, for people who don't know it, I think it's a, a great underused tool in Price Labs. Really great way to see all your analytics for all of your listings. So I guess let me, and you can, in, and the thing is in Price Labs, you have a lot of filters, right? On the portfolio analytics side. So you have these dates that people want to compare in different ways. And you have, um, I don't know, different listings that you want to use. So for example, you could use uh, different groups here. Um, but the new thing here is that uh, some of our users use this to report internally, right, within their companies, or they also want to use this as a tool to report to their property owners, because you can kind of break down um, the, the properties by group. For example, you can select just listings for a property owner. And what we wanted to do is to kind of facilitate this uh, standardized communication, right? So now, after you select the filters that you want to show uh, in Price Labs here, um, in this in this dashboard, you get to go here to the export PDF. This is open. It will show like this. You can click on preferences, give a title to your report. So like test report, enter description. Test description. And then now you have a set 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 a group of preferences that will always show up once you generate a PDF. So with this now, you can always come back to Portfolio Analytics and use these same filters again to generate your report. So it's a lot more convenient to kind of generate the same report over and over again. So you don't have to like, every time you come to Portfolio Analytics and you want to generate a PDF, you don't have to like select, reselect the filters again. So you can come here monthly, for example, and generate monthly reports to communicate internally. So that's it. That's the new update for this one. Super cool. Thank you so much. Um, what I've realized today is that we saved 30 minutes is too less. Maybe we should have saved more time. Uh, we're going to stick around and answer a few questions here. But if we haven't uh, answered your questions uh, uh, well, uh, as long as you've used the right name here, we're going to try to find your account in Price Labs and try to answer. But uh, if you can, uh, if you can also shoot us an email at and I'm going to drop this in the chat, which is support at pricelabs.co. Uh, that'll, that'll make sure we have answers to your specific question, but we'll try to uh, get your answers. Um, okay, Ben, you had the simplest uh, question, how to find portfolio analytics, and then you found it, but portfolio analytics, you can find it in the navigation bar. Some users may not have it. It depends on what PMS you're using. For most PMSs, we are now able to get portfolio analytics, but for some, we still can't. Um, super cool. Um, all right. Uh, where can you see the, how is the price calculated box? It does not show, okay. Specific question, I'm going to get into it later, uh, later, later, later. Uh, There's a question about the number of listings that's used in base price. You want to um, pick that up? Yeah. Yeah, I, I guess we, we look at, 
about 300 listings for your base price help. Uh, and we give, like I was saying on the, on the explanation, we give preferences to listings that are similarly sized, right? So it might yep. go on a, on a wider radius than, than your usual dynamic pricing because we're only looking at listings similar to yours. So. Um, super cool. Uh, a bunch of people uh, mentioned that far out premium does not show up on their advanced customization. The reason why it does not show up is because it's, uh, it's access only. Send, drop us an email at support at pricelabs.co and we will enable it. Um, we haven't enabled it by default for all the users right now, uh, which is why. So I'm seeing Linda, uh, someone anonymous. Um, Jose uh, has the same question. Uh, maybe there are uh, more people. Um, someone's mentioning compare against market in portfolio analytics stopped working. Uh, Roger, uh, would be hard to find in uh, your account with Roger. Um, if you can drop us an email at support at uh, that'd be helpful. Pedro, do you mind going from the top and see if there are questions that you want to answer? Yeah, for the compared to market, it's good to keep in mind that that function is only there if you are a active subscriber of uh, market dashboards. So if your subscription to a market dashboard has expired, so like uh, maybe you got a, a free credit, for example, when you imported listing surprise labs, uh, after that subscription ex expires, you, you lose access to it and the uh, portfolio analytics. So it's kind of a, I don't know, it's kind of pulling data from there. So that's why it yeah. might be the case, but if that's not, please email us. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, if, if any of your not, if your screens look different from ours, uh, it might be one certain customizations are access only. So feel free to email us and we can enable certain customizations for you. Um, if on the base price one, if your screen is looking different, it might be because you've just imported your listing or because you're using seasonal prices, right? And Pedro, you had a third one. What was the third one on base price? Why uh, the screen could look you're, different? Yeah, there, there is a case for users who have booking patterns that don't qualify to a recommendation. Okay. Yeah. yeah. They, then they won't get a recommendation, yeah. Um, super cool, um, super cool. Um, that's that's largely it, guys. We're, uh, once again, uh, sorry that we, can't answer, there are, there are far too many questions that we had uh, imagined uh, uh, would come in here. Um, there's, uh, I do want to say, um, again, Michael, your question around far out premium. Far out premium is an access only, drop us an email at support at pricestaffs.co and we are going to enable it. And um, there's a question around uh, on, the, on the PDF, is it possible to add uh, uh, your own logo rather than Price Labs logo. I'm not sure if we can get rid of Price Labs logo, but it's in our plan to uh, to give you the ability to be able to add your own uh, logos. That's so that's that's kind of uh, in in the plan. No commitment on when it will get done, but that's something that uh, we understand uh, why uh, your company logo needs to be there. Um, in terms of like static customizations for that, when you put in the on the preferences, when you put in a a title and a description for the PDF that shows up on the on the cover of the on PDF. The so you itself. can maybe put your company name there if that's enough, but I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, fair enough, fair enough. Um, cool. Um, all right, Nancy, thank you so much for, uh, for the praise on YouTube channel. We keep updating content there. If you're still on this webinar and if you're not, uh, if you're not subscribed to our YouTube channel, go subscribe there. We keep adding uh, stuff in there. Uh, subscribe so that you can get notification on when we are adding something new. Uh, but uh, yeah, um, we're going to uh, wrap up this webinar now. Pedro, thank you so much for taking out the time and joining here. There might be more questions that I'll send your way. Uh, uh, right after this <laughs> webinar. But, uh, and as much as possible, if I can recognize your name, uh, if it's unique, uh, we will try to get back to you. If, uh, uh, but if you can just drop us an email at supportedpriceup.co, that'll make it a lot easier for us to, um, for us to uh, get back to you. And then uh, finally, um, this will be, this was recorded. This will be uploaded on our YouTube channel. Um, so you can uh, catch up on anything that you have missed. Cool. All right. Take care, everyone. Bye now.